Hi everyone, my name is Clyde B. Courtright and I am a current senior at Babson graduating in the class of 2023. Today I'm going to show you how to use Solver in Excel, especially in financial contexts. Solver is an add-in for Microsoft Excel that allows the user to optimize the value in a particular cell by allowing the program to change values in other cells. This is useful to make decisions in an environment where the decision maker wants to maximize profit or minimize costs, for example. This program is able to adapt to a variety of situations and it's useful for many financial situations as well. It is a tool for data analysis and it gives the user peace of mind with the assertion that a particular decision is the optimal one with respect to a defined output. We'll start by giving a broad overview of Solver and then explain some use cases within the realm of financial decision making. The first thing to make sure that you have when working with Solver is make sure that you have the Solver add-in downloaded. So how you can tell is if you open Microsoft Excel and click on the data tab here. Over here in the far right, you'll see if you have Solver added in as an option. If you don't have Solver added in, so if you don't have this right here, go to File, Options, and you're going to go into Add-ins. Make sure that this drop-down menu says Excel Add-ins and hit, click this Go button. And you want to toggle this checkbox so that it's checked and click OK. Now you should have Solver over here. So once you have Solver added in, we're going to go through some of the basics of Solver in Excel and its functionality. So I'm going to click on the Solver menu. We're going to go through each of these fields in detail. So the first is the objective cell. This is the cell that you want to either maximize or minimize. So for example, if we wanted to maximize total profit, we'd link the cell for total profit here. You can do this easily by either typing it in if you know the cell reference or clicking this and then you can select one here and click enter. This down here is um, where you would delineate whether you want this value to be maximized or minimized. So if it's something like profit or revenue, you'd want to maximize it. If it's something like risk or cost, you'd want to minimize it. You can also set the value in this objective cell to a specific value. So we can click this and say we want to make it equal to 100. We just type 100 in this box here. This here is our variable cells. So in here, we put the cells that are going to change. So your objective cell isn't going to change without something else in the model changing. So when our variable cell ch cells change, we can optimize our objective value. An important thing to note here is that the only thing you can put in the variable cells is um, constants. So you can't put anything that has an equation going towards it. The next is the constraints. So in order to add a constraint, we're going to click the Add button, and this pop-up menu will come up. You can add cell references to both the left side and the right side, and we can also change this to say that the left cell is less than or equal to the uh, right cell, equal to, greater than or equal to, and then there's these three options down here. If we use the integer option, it'll say that this cell can only be an integer, so it can't be a fractional value. And I'll just say binary, meaning that the cell can only either be zero or one, or different. So if we have a bunch of different cells in here, let's say we have a range like this, then this would mean that all these cells have to be different values. In order to add the constraint, click OK, and you'll get back to the menu, or um, since I didn't really add anything, we click cancel, or you can click add and then continue to add more. This here makes all of your variable cells above zero. So try to think if that is useful for your model. Uh, this drop down menu here is uh, where you'll delineate what kind of model it is. So if it's a nonlinear model, then you can uh, use any value that uses multiplication, division, things like that. A simplex LP model doesn't use any of those in either the objective cell or the um, constraints. If your model is not linear, default to GRG nonlinear rather than evolutionary. Clicking the solve button will uh, solve the whole um, model. Now that we've covered the basics of Solver, we're going to look at some Solver outputs. Once you hit solve on a Solver, an option will come up to download either a sensitivity report or an answer report or both. So I'll go over those in really brief detail. Uh, so the answer report will tell you several things about the optimal solution, including the original and final value of all variable cells, and if the constraints are binding. Binding constraints cannot change without changing the solution. If a constraint is non-binding, the answer report also tells you the slack that exists with this constraint. 
The sensitivity report tells you how much the values of the variable cells and constraints would have to change to change the optimal solution. This is useful in an environment where nothing is certain. The answer and sensitivity reports will be covered in much greater detail in classes that use Solver. Now we're going to look at two use cases in the financial, in financial situations that Solver can be used for. The first is capital budgeting. So suppose you're in charge of making a decision in which you must decide what projects to fund among a group of nine projects. You have a budget for the next two years, and you hope to optimize the NPV of the project in aggregate. The information for each project and the budget are included in the Excel image here. Each project has a cost in year one and a cost in year two, as well as an MPV that it generates. So the first step from getting to here to a solver solution is to step it up for solver. So we're going to create binary decision variables that tell us if we're funding this project. As a default, I put them all at zero, but we're going to use solver to find those later. The total net present value that we obtain is the sum product of the binary funded cell and the MPV of that project. We also want to make sure that we're in our budget for every year. So the budget we use in year one is a sum product of what we're funding and the cost in year one. And we need that to be less than or equal to 50, which is our budget. And then the same thing for year two, the sum product of the year two costs and whether or not we're funding, it has to be less than or equal to our budget for year two, which is $20. Uh, so now we're going to hit solver and I'll show you how we're going to get this done. So our objective is our total net present value. We want to maximize that and we want to do this by changing these funded cells here. Our constraints are that these two values have to be less than or equal to these two values. And something to note here is that I did them all together because these are the same, so um, it was able to be done all together. I'm going to set up. Hold on. Click OK to get you back here. Another constraint that we have is that we want these to be binary. So I'm going to highlight these and hit binary. OK. In this case, uh, we have a, a simplex LP model, so we're just going to use that. And I'm going to click solve. And what I can see here is that it's most optimal to fund projects 1, 3, 4, 6, and 9. Another use case is in pricing of products. So uh, suppose that your company sells suits. It costs this company $225 to make each suit. And this is not a number we can change, but we can change the amount that we sell the suits for, which is located here. So therefore this is highlighted in green because it's a decision variable. Uh, the elasticity of the demand is also a set value that we can't change. And so we first find kind of the linear demand curve by finding the slope and the intercept. The slope is a function of our current price, our current capacity, or our current demand and our elasticity, whereas the intercept is just uh, a function of our current price and our current demand. From this, we uh, have our decision variable, which is just a constant, and then our demand is a function of the slope and intercept line. Uh, from here, we get the revenue, the cost, and the profit. So we're going to use solver here. Our objective value is our profit. And again, we're going to want to maximize this because it's a profit value. The only decision variable cell is this suit price. And in this case, we actually don't have any constraints because there's nothing constraining our model. Uh, keep in mind that this is a GRC nonlinear model, meaning it's not linear, so we have to use that. So I'm just going to click solve here. We can see that the optimal solution is to sell suits for $362.61, and this leads to a profit of $37,817. I hope that you all learned something about using Solver to solve problems in finance and learned a little bit something about data analytics and Excel as well. Thank you.